everyone, welcome to your Manchester. Another fantastic show today. We touch on education and the arts. Oh, yes, indeed, that's where we're going, everybody. Today, I take the first leap into learning BSL, that's British Sign Language, with Coronation Street's Gemma, actress Dolly Rose Campbell. Also on today's show, we are joined by world-famous celloist and brother of Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber, Julian Lloyd Webber, as he continues his quest to bring music back to the schools and back to the youngsters. And if that's not enough, finally, tonight, we will be talking to uh, former East Enders star Cheryl Ferguson, who's joining us before embarking upon her appearance as fairy godmother over at the Stockport Plaza. We've got it all for you. This is how today looks. <music> First, we are here with actress Dolly Rose Campbell, who is from the Coronation Street. The Coronation Street. The Coronation, the Coronation Street. Street. Yes, that's correct. And she correct. plays our Gemma on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gemma, what's, what's the surname of Gemma? Gemma Winter. She's not married to Chesney yet, though. Well, she's not married to Chesney, no, they are engaged. Right. Um, so he proposed to her in the Land of Null episode. You ended up with some kids? Yes, and four. Four of them. I mean, yeah. that must be a logistical nightmare when you're filming. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they just, like, run off the set straight through the wall into what would be next door's house. Of course, one of these kids is, is um, not is good deaf. with his ears. Yeah, <laughs> allied, yeah. yeah. So, um, so we can still use the word deaf because there's, there's new words for everything, isn't there, these days? Yeah, yeah, it's fine to say deaf. Yeah. There's some people deaf, some people hard of hearing. Yeah. Um, there's a whole spectrum of deafness. Some people are born deaf. Some people have hearing when they're born, but then they go deaf later. Yeah, so just one... Um, child actor that's playing this role constantly then or is there yeah so we just have one actor that plays Alex, yeah. a little boy called joseph oh. and he he's deaf he was born deaf um and he has cochlear implants so i've been uh, wanting to learn sign language for so many many years i did a little bit when i was in um scouts or as we'll call it for this program brownies <laughs> and and uh so i, I learned that the vowels were a E I O U. Yeah. And I got a badge for learning that. And that's as far as I got with it. Oh, okay. So I really think it's one of the most important languages that isn't taught. People go ahead and they spend months and years learning um, Spanish and French. But actually, if you're here in the UK, the only other language apart from English is, of course, sign language. I have absolutely loved learning it. So mm -hmm. I feel very lucky that I got the storyline yeah. to have the deaf child because from that I've been able to learn sign language and through that I've met a whole community of people. Yeah, and I'm on level two now, so I did my level one, passed that. And how many levels is there? There's six levels. Six levels. Yeah. So, uh, and then there's interpreter after that. There's a, there's a guy that always comes down to some of my shows and I don't know if I feel sorry for him or I feel blessed that he can't actually hear my shows. Okay. Because... <laughs> If you've seen them, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But um, I want to be able to say thank you for watching my shows. Okay. And I'd like to, you to be able to teach me that. Yeah, I it's can show important. you that. Yeah, okay. So it's thank you. Thank you. Um, so it's the same sign for please as well. So please and thank you please and thank are the you. same. But it goes off your lip pattern. So deaf people, they watch the signs and then they also interpret the lip pattern as well. Wow. So it's like lip reading. Yeah. So you would say thank you thank to whoever you. it is yeah. uh, for coming and watching my show. What was for, what was for, <laughs> just for coming? Just for you. You just like you waving your hands for coming. For coming yeah. and watching. Watching. So he's watching you. Watching. So watching. Yeah. Um, and then performance. This is the one I use for performance. Like that. So yeah, like. Right, yeah. yeah, performance. It's actually quite therapeutic. Yeah. There's like a bit of a hand massage. So that's what I do. Lots of people think that deafness might run in families, but that's not the case. And statistically, within those families, only one person would tend to learn to sign to a good affluent level. Right. And how important is it for you to be able to converse with Joseph on set? Well, for me, the thing about Coronation Street is you have the opportunity to tell a story over a long time. So it wasn't like essential for us to be fluent in sign language straight away because we can show the process of the family learning and learning to adapt to having a deaf child. Emma comes across perhaps as not as the most brightest but of buttons as a character <laughs> and yet 
She's now taking on four children. Yep. And a, a ginger fiance. Yes. And one of the children's And there. the mother. And the mother. <laughs> the mother, yes. The mother. He's got a doppelganger at the moment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's all... You, you get it's all gone. Job, aren't you? Yeah. Like I said, I just feel really lucky that I was the one to get the storyline. Yeah. Of having a deaf child. And that's opened up this whole world of BSL to me, uh, which I never would have even known about before. I didn't know anything about, like, deaf club. Didn't know there was... TV content made for deaf people by deaf people, didn't know any of that. All of that is stuff that I've learned through learning sign language. And a lot of actors, I suppose, if they were given time off, they'd just chill out, wouldn't they? But not you. What keeps you I would get bored. Along? I yeah. would get too bored if I was just sat there doing nothing. I like to be busy. I prefer to be in than to be at home. Yeah. Um, and... I, I do, I just love learning, so learning the BSL, spending time with deaf people, finding out all about deaf culture, which I didn't know as a hearing person, I didn't know anything about before this. I just think it's a real privilege. Right, come on then, let's try this so, then. You're watching, you're Manchester. So, you're watching. Hold on, I've got to learn so this. So you, you, watching. Watching. You're. You're. It's like, like that. Like what? Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're. Your. Your, no, I did it wrong then. Oh. <laughs> your. Your. And then Manchester. Yeah. How would you shorten Manchester if you were to say sending it me on a text message? MCR. So it's M. Yes. M. C. C. Ah. Ah. So it's M, three fingers, so like the yeah. three legs on the M. Yeah. C. C. Ah. Okay. You're, You're watching. watching. Your. Your. Manchester. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then that's the deaf clapping. Yeah, Dolly Rose Campbell, thank you so much. Oh, for thank, you. Thank, oh thank, thank you. Thank you. There we are. There we go. Let's see what's on next. Oh, fabulous. Wasn't that really interesting? So we can all learn a little bit of sign language there. Now then, if music be the food of love... Yes, but is young, young person getting the right amount of music education? Have the days of collective music departments gone? And would you like music of all genres to be available? Or is music just for the elitist? Is it for elitist families, perhaps those with money? Well, to discuss this further, please welcome Julian Lloyd. So joining us now is Julian Lloyd Weather. Welcome to the show, Julian. How are you? Good, how are you? This is fantastic. When did your passion for music begin? Well, I mean, obviously there was a huge amount of music around in my family. Um, so I actually started playing a cello when I was four years old. Um, but I didn't take it seriously. I just played it for fun. And I just gradually got more and more into it. Um, and then when I started hearing some really great cellists in concert, that's when I kind of, when I was probably 12, 13, I thought this is what I wanted to do for myself. Yeah. Now, why the cello then? I mean, there's, obviously within your family, there's a, a plethora of interesting instruments yeah. to be to be having a go at. Why the cello? Good question, because there was there'd never been... Um, my father was an organist, my mother was a, a pianist. There'd never really been a string player in the family before. So um, I think what it was, my mother used to specialise in teaching young children the piano. So, of course, she tried with me. And, of course, I didn't like that. And I didn't enjoy playing the piano. And then I was taken to one of those children's concerts they used to have. I don't think they do now at the Festival Hall in London. And I spotted the cello in the orchestra. And I thought that looked an interesting instrument to play. So I said to my mum, I said, you know, if I, if I could play one of those, would you let me give up the, the piano? And she said, oh, OK. And that's what happened. That's it's quite fantastic. But I suppose a lot of the youngsters these days would class classical music as, as elitist. What do you say to them about that? Well, to me, it's never been elitist. I don't think composers wrote for just one group of people at all. I've always believed that classical music, all any kind of good music should be for everyone. And uh, I think what the problem that's happened is that it's gone out of our school system. And as I've, uh, or a lot of schools anyway, there's just no access to music, there's no access to instruments, you know, and it's only available to to children whose parents can afford expensive instruments and expensive tuition. And I think that's completely wrong. Uh, I've always believed that the music is for everyone. 
Yeah, I mean, when we started at high school, it, it was amazing to have a music department that would, you know, start you off on the triangle and then allow you to go and uh, involve yourself in other instruments and eventually, you know, find your, your niche and an instrument that you're passionate about. Why is it? disappeared so much for so many schools that's so right well i mean it's all about it's i guess it's you know you would say it's mostly about money isn't it? it's about cutbacks um but it's not only that i mean i spoke out recently about you, you know the lack of music on tv or at least mainstream tv i mean if people don't don't ever see something or ever particularly hear something how can they know whether they like it you know all this elitist business is because they're it's becoming more and more of the preserve of rich people who can pay for these instruments and lessons. And that's really tragic as far as I'm concerned. I've fought against that all my life. So how do we inspire young people to have a passion for, for music and playing music? We've got to get it back into the schools. But long term, that's really the only answer. You know, and it's up to people like myself and other uh, musicians to, to keep complaining about it till we get a result. I mean, there's lots of noises made by our present government about getting it back in the schools, but I just, I, I just want to see it happen because I, I all I see is the reverse. All I see is the less and less music, and I that all these noises are not are not um, achieving anything. So you've got a project at the moment, thirty under thirty. Uh, what is that all about? Yeah, that was something I came up with, the Classic FM and Sky Arts. Um, and basically, it's, it came through lockdown when it was so difficult for musicians to, to play because there were no concerts, basically. And I felt so sorry for the up-and-coming generation of really great young classical mus musicians. And so I went to Classic FM with the idea that we focus on their recordings. Um, and we came up with a list of 30 amazing musicians. We since then come up with a second list, so we now have 60 under 30. And I mean, it is incredible the talent. I, I think a lot of people will be surprised at the fantastic talent that is out there. And uh, we, we need to showcase that. There is so much out there. I just want people to be more interested in, in music of all different genres. I mean, it's fair enough listening to pop music, but actually these days when you listen to pop music, um, you know that some of the, 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 the string sections, for instance, it's all based within classical music, and I yeah. want people to get interested about that. I mean, that's the, the basis of music is is through that, you know. And I, I mean, all these people like Elton John, you know, that they he was classically trained, he went to the Royal Academy, and he came from a state school. And this is the important thing, and I think this is what we're so in danger of losing, and we have actually lost in a lot of places. We've got yeah. to do something about it. I mean, there's a lot of people talking about it, but it's just not happening. That's true. Uh, one of the composers you're very passionate about, of course, is Bach. Uh, why so passionate about him? Well, Bach really is the sort of essence of music. And uh, I've been doing this program with my wife. and We're going out, and particularly next summer, in a lot of festivals where she, because I, I no longer play now. I had an injury, so I can't play. Um, my wife's a really fine cellist. So we're going out together. And she's doing the hard part now, all the playing. And I'm sort of narrating the story of how these uh, Bach cello suites, which have now become extremely popular, were literally not played for 200 years. So it's a, it's a journey of discovery, literally. Yeah. Now, Bach, of course, uh, did he have a lot of access to music growing up? Well, I think he did. And, I mean, he, he had – how many children was it? Uh, nearly – 20 children or something and they all became musicians you know so it was definitely in the bark family now just before we do let you go julian um theater having a bit of rough time at the moment had a rough time for a few years yeah. do you think we'll ever get back to the heydays of the the glamorous world of of theater and indeed classical concert music i think there will always there will always be a place for those art forms. People will always want to see a, a great concert, always want to go um, to see a great uh, play or, or, or musical. But I think people are going to be very, very choosy about it. was a great violinist, Isaac Stern said, you know, if people don't want to, are not going to your concert, nothing's going to stop them. And I think that is funny, but true. Uh, I think people are going to be very choosy about what they go to. It's got to be exactly right. If you're doing a symphony concert, you've got to have the right conductor, the right music and the right solos. People are going to be more and more picky about what they go to. But these things will always exist. I'm convinced of that. Excellent. Julian, thank you so much for your time today. Absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
How amazing was that, everybody? Absolutely fantastic. Well, there is lots of shows coming. And of course, this is the season for Pantomime. One lady is about to appear in Stockport Plaza's very special one, everybody. Oh, yes, indeed. And joining us now is the one and only Cheryl Ferguson. Welcome to the show, Cheryl. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you all? Very good indeed. Are you in preparation and in readiness for this fabulous panto season? I really am, yeah. I've been learning my lines, learning my songs, um, getting ready to uh, wow the crowds at Stockport and the neighbouring towns and cities. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good fun. I'm really, really looking forward to doing it. Um, putting on my little fairy gown and waving my magic, magic wand this Christmas. It's going to be very exciting. You're going to be our fabulous fairy godmother in Stockport in one of the most beautiful venues that I think we have in Manchester. Are you excited to be part of the Stockport Plaza? I love Stockport Plaza. I mean, not only is it just a beautiful theatre, but it's also got a tea room upstairs. So basically, you can go upstairs, have your sandwich, have a cup of tea, have a, have a bun. It's lovely. I mean, it's just, what, what is not to love about going there? having your dinner and going and entertaining the crowds. Um, I mean, it's just going to be fun and um, people love it there. It's always full of sort of, you know, it's a place to make memories. That's what, what that's what Panto and things are about. It's like, go and make memories. Go with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Just go and make memories, have fun and have those times and remember that. Are you getting to have a go on the organ, Cheryl? Well, um, I like to have a go on an organ, I can't deny, but um, uh, I do love, um, I probably won't be able to have a go with their organ, it's very big and it comes up um, from the ground, so um, uh, I might obviously not entertain the crowds with it, but I might, um, I might ask the organ master if I can have a little go of his organ at some point, you never know, they might let me. What's so special for you about being part of Cinderella? Well... You get to play magical, you get to be able to wave the wand. And even if, um, you know, it's been a rubbish couple of years, isn't it? Let's face it. And um, now we're kind of looking forward to having, you know, a, a bit of a nicer time and a bit more, you know, I mean, it's, the weather's cold. We need to huddle together and sort of keep warm and do all of that. So I, I, I'm looking forward to sort of watching the little ones having a great time, enjoying themselves um, and just letting the parents let their kids have a bit of a sugar rush and go mad around the theatre really it's 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 quite fun to see that there are no real rules there are rules in panto but there are no real rules there are children running up and down the aisle they're just running up the, they're going mad some of them want to be cinderella some of them want to just boo at the baddie it's just it's very interesting you know it's um it's it's a fun time it's, it is quite magical you know so what dates can we catch this wonderful show then well, it's from the 8th of December to the 8th of January, so you can come along. There's a couple of shows a day. There is a website, um, as you know. Um, and, um, you, yeah, just come along. Do you know what? Come along, have some fun, enjoy yourself, and uh, put, put a couple of hours uh, away and um, just have fun and make memories with your family. And there's some beautiful songs in it. There's some magic that happens in it. Um, Beautiful Definitely. costumes, beautiful scenery in a most wonderful, wonderful theatre. So thank you, Stockport, for having me. Um, and, you know, uh, next year, next year, let's make it Manchester. Let's, let, let, let's, let's, do, let's do Manchester next year. Let's get, let's get that going. Definitely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you be our fabulous fairy godmother over at the Stockport Plaza. Everybody check it out. Cheryl Ferguson, thank you very much for today, though. Thank you. I mean, how fantastic is that, everybody? So there's a wonderful show coming to Stockport Plaza. You've all got to check this one out. I went to the press night of it uh, a few weeks ago, and it is extremely, extremely camp. Well, that's it for today's show, everybody. But don't forget, on Sunday's show, we are going to be visiting Lightopia. Oh, yes, it's fantastic. We're all going to, so going to be speaking about diabetes with the winner of Britain's Got Talent, that is Mr. Tom Ball. And, of course, there is a brand new musical coming to the Lowry over this festive period, and that is called Claws. And we'll be speaking to two of its actors, the wonderful uh, Corrine Priest and Chris Draper. Till then, though, thanks to each and every one of you for watching this week's episode of Your Manchester! Manchester!